ballistic missile launches are, are something that the DPRK has been doing. Um, 69 in 2022, several dozen um, last year, um, and this is their, their latest um, set of launches. Um, it was unfortunate that they did it when the secretary was in Seoul um, for the Summit for Democracy. We still um, assess that the DPRK or Kim Jong-un is not looking at an imminent attack or near-term attack. Um, I think Kim Jong-un probably knows what that would likely mean um, in response. Um, but we are very concerned about the level of activity, the weapons advancements, um, and the increasing alignment with Russia over the past couple of years. It's been an, uh, a very concerning development um, to have a permanent member of the UN Security Council openly uh, flout um, the Security Council resolutions that it actually signed up to, along with the rest of the international community, um, and that they're engaging in weapons transfers. Um, we know that there have been at least 10,000 um, containers that have gone from DPRK to Russia, uh, and DPRK is not doing this for free. Um, there's almost certainly things that DPRK wants in, re in return, um, and we're concerned about what might be going on uh, to the other side. Um, we also worry about what the DPRK could be learning from Russia's use of these weapons um, and ballistic missiles on the battlefield and how that might might embolden or, um, and help the DPRK even further advance their weapons program. So this is a really dangerous, uh, dangerous time. Does the U.S. see new evidence that more ballistic missiles provided by North Korea to Russia are being fired um, at targets in Ukraine? since 2024. Yes, this is of course concerning to us um, that we have a known proliferator in the DPRK selling weapons um, to, to, to Russia uh, and to be able to conduct their unlawful, brutal attack on Ukraine, killing Ukrainian people, destroying Ukrainian infrastructure, and just destroying lives. Um, and so we're very much concerned about that. There have been at least um, 10 instances where um, the DPRK missiles have been used on, on the battlefield. So we're absolutely concerned about what that means for proliferation going forward. Um, and of course, we're and how this just exacerbates the situation in Europe. You have said that there would have to be interim steps toward ultimate denuclearization. Could you please elaborate on your thinking? Our policy is the same um, since we rolled out the, our policy review back in the spring of 2021, um, which is that we are absolutely looking for um, the complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Um, and so that goal has not wavered um, for us at all. Um, and we are uh, very much lashed up with all of our allies and partners on that goal. Um, so when, when we talk about interim steps, um, we're making explicit what's always been implicit, which is that, of course, this is not going to be overnight that we're going to have denuclearization. Um, and so there are valuable discussions that we can have with the DPRK on uh, uh, reducing the, the potential for, for, for military risk um, and um, other conversations, substantive discussions that we have um, as we work um, toward complete denuclearization. It is not a departure. Um, it's, you know, as I mentioned, this is not something that's going to happen overnight. Uh, and of course, there are, there are going to be, have to be um, substantial discussions that will need to take.